Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another episode of Vinyl Village Garage. We're going to call this one In the Field again. There's the old avalanche left me stranded on the last trip down here to Bloomington to help out the old college student. But we got a return of uh, episode one car, the Outback Smokehouse, uh, has become sick. Uh, started running bad, running poorly, took it to the shop here in town. They told her it needed plugs and wires. And I said, well, that didn't sound too far out of whack. They put that in there, didn't fix it. So once they determined that that wasn't the repair, they told her it had dropped a valve. Well, that seems a bit extreme from a car that was just kind of running rough to have a major mechanical issue. So did some talking to her on the phone and come to find out, I think it had jumped time originally on the timing belt, running bad. He's kind of torse that maybe the misfire caused it to jump a tooth or two. Well... It's not the case. I want to show you what we got here, but uh, it's definitely not a time belt problem. And the great news is it didn't drop a valve, but still runs like garbage. So let's check it out. Well, let me get you in here and see what I found here as soon as I got here. I've already started it once, but I want you to see what I'm combating or at least looking into. Now, of course, if it had dropped a valve or severely jumped time or even jumped a tooth, you typically get a really rough idle if it jumped the tooth on a time belt or let's say if it drop the valve you'd have a severe misfire a severe engine mechanical damage where it'd be making a bunch of noise or wouldn't even run but it starts right up nice and smooth check engine light went on and off there are no fault codes in it and these computers on these ones they're sensitive enough if it actually picks up a misfire it'll set a misfire code so you'll see i'll put it in drive here it won't break torque or power break it if it had an ignition misfire well normally it would drop down and do real bad but uh it revs right up and does fine so you're saying, then what the heck's wrong with the car? Well, if you go drive it on the road, oh, about uh, a cruising speed and stomp on the old loud pedal, it just has about half the power it should. It's really low on power. So I'm thinking at this point, I, it's definitely not a tying belt. Definitely not a dropped valve like they had told her. So now I'm kind of a bit of a pickle. Problem I have is I'm about an hour and a half away from home one way. I brought tools and stuff planning to do a tying belt if it didn't drop a valve and only jump time. Well, it's not either one of those. Now my choices are, what do I do? It kind of acts like low fuel pressure. I hate using the word guess, but uh, a fuel gauge or fuel pressure tester is about $45. A new fuel pump at the same place is $45. So... I hate guessing, but I don't feel like burning up three more hours of my time just to go get a pressure gauge just to test fuel pressure. So I think my next step is drop a fuel pump in this thing and hope for the best. But the nice thing about Subaru, I'll show you where they hide this thing at, and it's actually really nice. I'll get out of the car here. I'll show you the, the fuel pump thing on these. It's actually a pretty cool setup and something else that caught my eye before I get out of here. If you look up the old driveway up here, you look right about there, a little black car on the driveway. Hmm, that's kind of a neat car. I might have to go check that out before I get out of here, but that's not the mission at hand. All right now, now, this is the back seat of the car, of course. The seat base here will flip forward, but somewhere inside here should be, there it is, oh, pull that, pull that dude there. Now, underneath this little, this is the passenger rear side. Flip this little <laughs> thing up, and that's where the fuel pump hides. It got a nice little access panel. This thing has 190,000 miles on it, and the fuel pump's never been changed. So, I'm thinking I'm feeling a little better about the whole deal at this point. Maybe, 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 hopefully this will fix it. So... Now, to get this apart, four Phillips screws, it looks like, takes this panel off. Then we get access to the fuel pump. I think I'd never use a screwdriver. I guess I'll say something about Subaru when it comes to this. They At least they plan for the replacement. I don't got to climb around here on the ground and do the uh, drop the fuel tank technique. So I'm digging this part. Now, wires, pressure, return, vent probably. So basically unplug that, undo those. Looks like a handful of bolts around the outside. And pull that assembly out. I 
must be the pressure line because now it's leaking a little bit of fuel there. The good news is it appears that the little dumps on the ground on the outside. Well, that's short. say what I have what five minutes in removing a fuel pump out of a Subaru I mean, I'll tell you what these engineers were thinking on these things just in case you're wondering Chad I'm still wearing flip-flops today now this is the whole fuel pump hanger center assembly and all fuel level gauge some kind of probably a light for laying slow fuel level fuel pumps hiding inside that so i wanted to get this apart and change out the pump so i'm under the getting place you'll get a pump just hang on a minute well uh, yeah back at it here a quick part run there only about 2.5 miles in bloomington but that takes about 15 minutes being a busy college town it seems and you know, unfortunately you can't really tell on the camera but it's getting really gray like it's gonna start raining on me so it's just loads of fun here today but the good news is the first place that i called was car quest which is advanced auto and they had a pump in stock, so that's a little odd in my opinion, unless it's a fail item. So make me feel a little better about this and hope this makes this go. And the fuel pump literally is just the old fuel pump itself, not the whole assembly. You could buy the whole assembly, but that's all special order stuff. And well, I don't have time for that. We're gonna try this. Like I said, 45 bucks for this bad boy right here. I'm hoping this makes it go. So gotta get inside here is the next step. Up here. You know, I think college kids are a little bit expensive because every time I make a trip to Bloomington, it turns into either my truck breaks and now I'm fixing another car. So, I just I guess maybe, like I said, I'll never die of boredom, that's for sure.
Well, that'll do it. That just clips in there, clips in there. Plug the old electrical line back in here for the motor. Make sure the level switch is hooked up and gauge is there. So I say we're ready to stab this thing back in the car and see how this goes. Hell yeah. Fun part here, I think you gotta hook the sending unit first and the sock. And whatever that thing is. Seems to come out better than it goes in. Oh, maybe. All the bolts are tight. Next step is just hook up the vent line. Yeah, looks like a return line. Click and then supply. Okay, and no wiring. I think I'll leave that cover off. Let's go for a drive and see what it does. Okay. I had to cycle the keys a couple times to get pressure built back up. Right, let's see what happens. Not much difference here sitting still. I think the true test is going to be dropping in gear and trying to go around the block here. That's a vast improvement. It actually climbed that grade around the corner from the house here. So I hate to say it's a bit of an educated guess, but I didn't know what else to do in this situation. Like I said, a fuel pressure tester or gauge was going to cost just as much as a fuel pump or three hours of my time to go home and pick up my gauge. So I guess lesson learned probably pack more tools than you need. And you're probably better off for that. Uh, save yourself a little bit of grief and some headache, maybe some guesswork, but process elimination, uh, I guess you'd say, actually won this time. So I'm gonna give this car a clean bill of health, let her drive around the block, make sure she's happy with it. And I'm gonna say it's gonna wrap us up for this time around. So I guess you could say college is very expensive for the kids and the parents, because every time I make a trip, it seems to cost me a little bit more, but I guess the bonus is I get some more videos and get you drag you guys along with me for the adventure. So I guess you appreciate, appreciate you watching and follow along with us. Uh, I 
don't typically plan these things. It's kind of fun to grab the camera and get you involved. You'd like to see more videos like this? Well, that means something else broke. That's just what I do. Or I'm maybe restoring one of the old cars in the garage. So I've got kind of a variety of things happening on the channel, but uh, we try to keep it fun or educational or, you know, just see what, uh, see what I'm getting into. So appreciate you uh, liking what we're doing. And of course, all the subscribers I currently have, really appreciate you guys following my journey here. So of course, anything you'd like to see, drop in the old comments down there. I may have done it or have a video on it or make one for you too, just the same. So I'm gonna get back to the house here and it's actually just starting the rain. So again, win that battle there too. So I'll take that as a bonus on this time. So I'm gonna wrap it up and then I'm gonna get out of here and get cleaned up, get find some dinner and we'll see you next time. <laughs>